According to the show, right, Jesus has been arrested for illegal entry. And what the stakes of the show will now be about are whether or not he can be extradited to Israel. Hmm. Uh, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I actually <laughs> have no fucking idea. It is I mean, is they, that they, how it works? Those are some words they use. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by the Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? I am excited, Heath. Excited. For this week's guests. So am I. Long time coming. All right. We also have veteran masochist Thomas Smith. Not the him. Arguments podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We've already had him on the show. Yeah. <laughs> on many other podcasts. Yeah. Thomas, well, I'm excited too, about Eli. Thomas. <laughs> but uh, Eli's not. Thomas, welcome back. Oh, thank you for having me. I want to thank Eli for the appropriate energy, though, because what a gem. What a oh. gem we just saw. Oh, <laughs> good. What a gift. Good times. We've been given. Oh, yeah. yeah. We also have first time masochist Matt Cameron, also from Opening Arguments. Matt, welcome to the show. Everyone, I am so excited to share the good news about my good friend, Hot Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to be watching a movie about, definitely that's correct, Hot Jesus. So, Thomas, tell us. And how. What movie about Hot Jesus are we going to be breaking down today? Uh, we watched Messiah, the, the show, the Netflix show, episodes three and four. Yeah, it's a show, not a movie. And Messiah is a show that asks, what if God sent Jesus back to earth, but he did absolutely nothing but sit still in different places? <laughs> <laughs> this is That might as well be the whole show. That, you know, you say hot Jesus. Every scene with Jesus in this show could end with someone just being like, well, it's a good thing you're hot. And then leaving. Like that could really be, he doesn't say anything. He doesn't do anything. He just sits. Yeah, but he's hot for sure. So, so hot. We all agree. He's so hot though. Yeah, we all, all agree. Yeah. I expect it yeah. out of him. I mean, he's in a twink way. Like we're all, if we're all into like 5'1", 97 pound Jesus, then yes. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so we're all, and we're all on the same board. I think he's a little bit rugged too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's got the cheekbones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you smell, he would smell like a cool thing that you would read in a romance novel. Like how you wouldn't <laughs> think of it, but then someone would be like, he smelled like olives and lemon skin. And you're like, yes, I do want right? that. Yes, I do I, want I, it. I, was smelling I it wouldn't have now. called that shot, but I do want it now. <laughs> Amazing. Literally, I have to share this. When I was trying to explain this show to Thomas, I couldn't remember the name and I Googled. Can you possibly guess? Hot Jesus Netflix. It came right up. <laughs> yeah, that's a true okay. story. Some other fun stuff comes up when you Google that. But, yeah, uh, I was yeah. going to say, Matt, <laughs> I know this. this is our first time meeting and everything, and I hate to come on so strong, but there's no way he didn't just see that on your browser and you were like, oh, I was um, <laughs> looking. <laughs> and he for... invented an entire show to <laughs> a justify it. Awful movie, yep. And wrote it in 10 minutes, and that would actually fit. That yeah. actually Explain makes sense. Yeah, yeah, explains a lot. Yeah, explains a lot about that. Thomas, we got to do God Awful Movies, and we have to do about Hot Jesus. <laughs> we have to do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I rented. I paid a very specific amount to this young gentleman's OnlyFans. <laughs> Which is more well, like well crafted, this show or that AI Seinfeld that went on for eternity? Because I think that the AI Seinfeld had more human touch to it. I think significantly, yeah, a lot more, a <laughs> lot more TLC going on in that yeah, one. This is definitely about Jesus, nothing for sure. It's a good deal of that. <laughs> yeah, just sitting there smiling. All right, Matt, you chose. Messiah for this episode. Um, why is my question, I guess? <laughs> Did you find like a glowing review or something? I don't make you watch my porn, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I did find a glowing review I'll start with, but uh, this is from Dan Feinberg of The Hollywood Reporter. If you're eager to watch Messiah, dot, 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 enjoy. My saying it's a badly made show doesn't make it exist any less. <laughs> sure. There you go. So yeah, why this particular show? How did you choose this? Of all the bad shows, I know. So I've been working on anger lessons with Thomas and I just realized when I was rewatching <laughs> this, I'm not great at getting angry. I really don't get annoyed. I'm pretty easy to get along with. And uh, Thomas has been trying to, you know, liven me up. I'm the opposite of that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. We We're balance, an odd but... couple pairing. 
<laughs> but once in a while, I gotta, get, I gotta get mad about something. And as I was rewatching this, I realized this is it. This is my senior thesis in anger. I'm gonna tell you very quickly, I'm here in a legal capacity. I'm the other person in opening arguments for the moment. And I'm gonna talk about the law. I specifically practice immigration law. I specifically deal with a lot of the situations that we see in this show. Well, they're trying to be portrayed in this show. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's just like this, this right? Is that how it's going like right. now? It's got a big yeah, let's be careful. national yeah. trial. Yeah. Old man Rickens. Yeah, but I just want to be clear with the listeners up front, the deal we're going to make here. I'm not here just to tell you, oh, they used INA 212 instead of INA 237. No, and real heads know what I just said. But I'm here to tell you, everything about this show is wrong. Just everything. This is not a bit. I really mean this. Which law enforcement agencies are involved, how they detain and charge hot Jesus, the charge itself, which court they send him to, who's prosecuting him, the relief he's seeking, the arguments his lawyer makes in support of it, which kind of judge is involved. They can't decide whether this is a state or federal case literally not determined throughout the show. That's why we're here, folks. It's bad. Are the are the <laughs> seats in the courtroom faced the right way, at least? Like, is there anything, Matt, that they got right? Or is... <laughs> I will give them credit for portraying the inside of a courtroom. Okay. They did, nothing that happened inside it was correct. But I, I wanted to say, if this was a medical drama, we'd be watching the guy come in with a broken leg and they start doing a heart transplant. That's what we're looking at. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no question. <laughs> All right. And Eli, tell us, how bad was this show? Well... If you love the soft, smiling, smug satisfaction of every time someone's ever played Jesus on our podcast, but you wish they focused more on the how to handle Lazarus's life insurance payout of things, <laughs> you <laughs> will love this movie. If I can peek behind the curtain slightly for our audience, when Thomas and I talked about this, Thomas was like, hey, Matt's got what he really wants to do. It's Messiah, the Netflix show. And I was like, oh, usually do TV shows. He was like, trust me, they get everything wrong. And Thomas was like, episode three. As we're going to go over, episode three, nothing fucking happens. Nothing. And I was yeah. like, why does Matt want to talk about this? And then luckily, <laughs> Matt was like, episode three and four. And episode four made it all worthwhile. It is the pinky to the sphincter of yeah. Christian cinema. <laughs> and I am deeply grateful for it. Okay, but episode three is important foreplay for that. So we oh, yeah, do that. Sure. Yeah. Set you up. It gives you the context. <laughs> all right. Is there anything y'all would like to nominate this thing for being the best at being the worst at? Well, I could say um, best, worst, cell phone related anything. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's unreal. We'll get to it. But to give a little preview of the first scene, the very first scene, it's nighttime. A man has gotten out of bed. The woman's still in bed. She hears what is obviously a phone call vibrating, right? How do I know that? Because it vibrates exactly like a phone when you get a call, which is, meow, meow, meow. it's a persist, you're getting a phone call. She wakes up, she says, hey, someone's texting you. <laughs> no, that's not what's happening. Someone's it texting you in perfect rhythm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't end there. It's obviously called, she goes to the phone and what does she see? It's neither a text nor a call. It's a fucking tornado warning. <laughs> Which, why wouldn't her phone be going off? Why would his phone just be going off and be vibrating like a ringtone? It would make that piercing noise. Remember when the government told us like, hey, the random time your phone, all of your phones are going to just go fucking nuts. And it and it happened. Remember that? It would be that. Yeah. Why would you, his phone is the, the tornado texts him personally. He's like, hey, I'm, I'm in town. If you I'm headed by. Wanna. Oh, he used to date the tornado. That actually oh, makes a lot of sense is. for the okay. movie. Yeah. Never mind. I cracked it. Withdrawn. <laughs> okay. In terms of the cadence of texts, though, I've occasionally been like a little nervous about texts I was going to write. And I like typed them out ahead of time so that I could like do one sentence, send it like a not crazy person. Five seconds later, approximately do another sentence, send it. Oh, my God. Yeah. This explains a lot. Yeah. yeah, it really does. <laughs> if it takes that much thought for you to text, that's why I never get... So it looked, like it looked like I was just naturally talking. Just natural, normal text. Can you just <laughs> pass this clip along to your therapist? I think it's more useful for them than it is for the podcast. I don't have a therapist. <laughs> okay, anybody else for a best worst? Episode four is the best at having the worst script ever written to annoy me specifically. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Great work, guys. And I will tell you, I found the script writer. I looked him up. I know who you are. Your Twitter, you, you look like a nice guy. I'm not going to name you, but you've got this coming. You deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was going to go with best worst protest signs. Yeah. 
So there's a couple of courthouse scenes and outside of the courthouse, there's the people on different sides with their protest signs. They're so <laughs> very stupid and silly. I'll just mention one right now. I'm pretty sure there was one protest sign that just said, you, that's it. <laughs> just like you, you are, you, I protest you. <laughs> So weird. Or is that the best protest sign? Or is it the best one? Because you can bring it to any every protest. protest. Yeah, very, <laughs> yeah, they get it. That saves you money on tape yeah. and sticks. You or can get a fuck. really nice sign, like really do it up, get it professionally yeah. made. Yeah. Maybe that person just follows protests like, uh, like uh, what's one of those bands? The, the Grateful Dead or something. They don't even care what the protest is. They just go from protest yeah. to protest. Right, yeah. And they have a sign that works everywhere. Their yeah. partner was like, you're spending thousands of dollars on Oak Tag. This is crazy. It's like, <laughs> yeah. all right, all right, all right. Fine, I'll this. limit the Oak Tag budget. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to go with best worst villain because I need to explain what happened for this show to our audience. So here's the thing. Audience, they were writing this show. It's not very good, but they were trying their best and they were like, great. So he's this guy, he's in the Middle East and he's trying to get back to Jerusalem and they won't let him just like it would happen really with the Messiah. So who would try to stop him? And they were like, the CIA or the secret government. And they're like, you can't be the CIA. They care about America. So they were like, what are, what are some spy agencies in the Middle East? And the guy was like, I don't know, man. I don't know anything about any government. And he was like, we'll just make the bad guys Mossad. It doesn't have quite the Jack Bauer effect they were going for. We'll talk about it when it happens. Yeah, it's funny you say that because I thought the real villain in this was the ACLU lawyer. Yeah, yeah. well, sure. I think yeah, obviously. That's what the movie is saying. I think yeah, so. it's well, confusing. We'll get we'll get I have questions about that. Yeah. All right. We will get there. But first, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back to tell you all about. Messiah, episodes three and four with the really bad law stuff. Oh, you wanted to see me, Dad? Jesus, there he is, my big guy. Hey, I've got good news, buddy. You're going back to Earth. Oh, wow, finally. I got to tell you, I was starting to think the whole uh, before this generation passes away thing was uh, a bit of a fib, you know? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, kiddo, unless there's a 2,000-year-old dude walking around down there, you're kind of already in that soup. Well, I'm sure it's fine. Right, yeah. Anyways, you're headed down, and you're going to appear in Nazareth with your followers. Mm, on, on the border of modern-day Israel? Is that going to be okay politically? Um, no. No, it's not. But I'm sure you'll work it out when you're down there. Right, but like there's governments now and treaties and stuff. Won't me and my followers like possibly start a war? Very possibly, kiddo. Very much so. Right. Dad, any chance I could maybe show up and announce myself in a way that doesn't cause an international incident to no benefit? Kid, I'd love that, but we kind of already called our shot with the book. Call our shot with the book, yeah. Now I get it. Great. Uh, Thomas, do these people podcast in an abandoned warehouse? No, but it's just where they said to meet them. Weird. Oh, hello there, Matt. Well, if it isn't, Matt. Guys, what are you doing? Why why are you standing behind a screen? No reason. Just thought Matt might like to check out our bulging muscles before we pod. Check the bod before we pod. That's what we always say. Always say that all the time. (laughs) Okay, this is silly. Come out from behind there. No, don't pull the... (laughs) Really? They tape balloons to themselves? Yeah, sorry, Matt. We we wanted to get really ripped before we met you, but working out is really hard. Yeah, have you ever tried a sit-up? It's basically impossible. Physically impossible. Doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, guys, if you wanted to mix up your gym time and maximize your results, why don't you try FitBot? What's FitBot? Seriously, Matt? Seriously? He didn't even pause. Wow. Sorry, what did I do? What? What? Don't worry about it. FitBod is a fitness app that creates completely personalized workouts that adapt as you improve. Whether you are a seasoned gym goer or you're starting your fitness journey, FitBod will push you to make progress. It's like having your own personal trainer, but better. It's cheaper and you can work out anywhere with or without equipment. And it's easy to build a custom fitness plan that works for you. It's true. I downloaded FitBod when they became a sponsor. I love how the app can change my workout based on the equipment I have available, whether that's squeezing in a quick workout at a hotel or a fully stocked gym. That's why I, Eli Bosnick, personally endorse FitBod. Wait, wait, wait. You already knew about FitBod? 
Yeah, but I had the store credit for the balloons. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, Thomas, I'm in. Where do I sign up? Add FitBod to your workout essentials. Join FitBod today to get your personalized workout plan. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app free at fitbod.me slash gam. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash gam. All right. Well, looks like next time we pod, our bods will be ready. Heck yeah, they will be. Thomas, is everyone in podcasting like this? No, it's, it's pretty much just them. Got it. And we're back. So before we start, I'll catch everyone up on the amazing plot from number one and two episodes. <laughs> Don't worry, won't take long. So guy shows up in Syria and does not do a miracle. A bunch of people are like, whoa, a miracle. He smiles. To be clear, his miracle was saying something would not happen and it didn't. Mm. So he's clearly the Messiah and hundreds of people follow him into the desert and they enter Israel. The guy gets arrested. Then he vanishes from jail somehow and appears at the Temple Mount in Jerusalem and gives a big sermon on the Mount. It's very subtle. Mm. The guy is called <laughs> Almasi, which means the Messiah or the anointed or the traveler or one who cures by caressing. At the sermon, a kid gets shot and then caressed back to life by this mm. guy. Not great. Yeah. And yeah. then Almazi vanishes again. So there you go. You're all caught up. From there, we cut to the state of Texas, because fuck you. And a girl is packing up her stuff into a bag to run away from home, I think. Mm. Yeah. And just, I, 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 we'll, we'll get to this horrible show in a second. But I do have to point out, because you're probably thinking, wait a second, did Heath just say he brought a child back to life? But the show is not ready to go full. He's totally the Messiah yet. So the way they misdirect away from that is like, I wasn't looking directly at him when the kid came back to life. So you're like, well, maybe he switched the kids, right? Maybe <laughs> fucking Michael yeah. Caine's going to come out and show us a squished kid under a platform or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to add a historical point of fact here that actually Almasa also means the Antichrist for Muslims. Ah. It's a weird choice. This entire show is banned in the Kingdom of Jordan because of that. Ooh, Why would they do that? It could just be because it sucks, though. It could be because it sucks. Yeah. That, I mean, if we yeah. could ban it from if America. If I yeah. were no, a dictator, yeah. there's a lot of shows I would ban because yeah. they just fucking suck. Exactly. Sure. First and foremost, Glee, then the <laughs> show. Glee is amazing. We're in a fight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'll let the cliques come for me. So this is the daughter of the town's local pastor. I'm going to tell you that because the show will not tell you until no. I'm going to say 30 minutes into this 38 minute episode. Oh, but, but, but Eli, the show will tell us why she's running away or nope. anything about the family at all. No, nope, no, will okay. not. No, will not. Yeah, no. So she's packing up. We also see her dad and this is the preacher of the town, he's also sneaking out. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so he goes into his church and he's deactivating the smoke alarm while holding two <laughs> comically large gas cans. Whatever could he be up to? <laughs> deactivating the smoke alarm. Like, all right, this little beeping is going to give me away. That's the real problem here. Not the yeah. pouring the gas everywhere and then the raging fire. If someone hears a beep, it's done. And on his hand, it says, like, step three, set fire. And he's, like, checking it <laughs> off. Set yeah. on fire, yeah. So just as he's about to, you know, go and set his church on fire, there's a tornado warning. And I wrote in my notes, okay, you got to admit, it's pretty ironic that you're in the middle of destroying your church and then a tornado comes around and destroys your church, right? <laughs> is that a thing you prayed for? Is that God doing you a favor? Like, how do you read that one? What is that message yeah. from God? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut over to the church again. The guy's wife, the preacher's wife wakes up and he's like literally holding the two gas cans and she's <laughs> like, hey. <laughs> what you doing? And he's like, nothing. I was, I'm doing a sex thing with gasoline is a better thing than the real just answer. Just gassing up the old church. Gonna, just, uh, just, uh, just a little low, you know? Would, just, you, would you believe kettlebell ladders? I'm doing kettlebell <laughs> ladders. <laughs> but she's like, anyway, there's a tornado and we really blew the special effects budget of this show on it. So we should go run away from it. Did you guys also think that the tornado was going to like blow out the fire? Because I actually thought that's Oh, that would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Not in my house, bitch. Hmm? This director clearly wanted to make a tornado movie. I mean, there's, there's yeah, some good no, tornado yeah. shots in here. And coincidence, there is now a Twisters 
a sequel to Twister, the film uh, that we all know and love so much. Maybe someone was watching Messiah and thought, you know what we haven't done in a little while? <laughs> Tornado stuff. Keith, I, I don't think I've ever asked you this. Were you like me where you had four VHS tapes as a kid and so you've watched those four movies and one of them a was million Twister? times? And yeah. one of them was Twister for <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. I watched Twister so many times. I know every, I haven't watched it in 30 years. I know every line. Yeah, Twister, Cool Runnings, Karate Kid 2, <laughs> Ooh. And the cartoon Robin Hood movie. <laughs> oh, yes. Ooh. I love that one. Oh, the music. And you didn't turn out a furry. Interesting. <laughs> well, because that's that's like if you watched an army recruitment tape every afternoon and you didn't join the army. That's a I hate to break it to you. I just don't do furry stuff with, with you. I know we're like tight. Oh, but... it's the worst. <laughs> the personas are all getting mixed up. Matt, you a furry? You like a, put on a big suit, get fucked? Fuck other people. Hey, do you mind not with, with my new... My well, new I'm, I'm, I'm trying to bond with him. I'm trying to bond. Nothing happens I made the in this mistake episode. of stepping away from this conversation, obviously. <laughs> I think it's called boinking. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. So yes, by the way, in case anyone's wondering, Matt Cameron, convicted furry. <laughs> All right. Definitely a crime. Okay, come on. Yeah, let's be nice it's, it's, it'll be right. very, it'll, in future America, it will be. <laughs> That's true. Head on over to opening arguments. They'll tell you why. Anyways, so now they're going to run around the house. They, they're like two-room house looking for Rebecca. Like she's just going to be silently yeah. making a peanut butter sandwich in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she's editing. I don't know. Sometimes you have the earphones <laughs> and you yeah. can't get phone calls at that moment. Oh, it's a good thing I don't live in tornado country. Because, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Would, you would be just sucked up gone. into the vortex. You'd be in the middle of it. I'd still be editing, though. I'd be in the... You'd see me spiraling around. Yeah. I've just got the laptop going. I'm getting going, this like, weird fucking. hiss. <laughs> <laughs> Still can't hear Fucking Matt. Matt can't fix his audio. This guy, there's always hissing. It's too real. Also, there are two guys in their car trying to outrun a tornado. Don't worry, they don't succeed. But I think that's largely because they try to juke the tornado with several <laughs> sharp turns. Yeah, you got to do a spin move there, not a juke, obviously. Yeah, I think you're supposed to take three lefts in a row and then the tornado... Doesn't fall or no. Right, exactly. Can't fall. Serpentine pattern. Or maybe yeah. if you turn enough times, it'll be like, that's not a car. It's another tornado. How's it going, Chris? You pull over and, you know, your truck holds up a newspaper. The tornado goes right by. And you're like, <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> One other thing I have to touch on in this scene. And again, I know nothing happens in this episode, but I do have to talk about no, it. No, nothing. The preacher is gesturing everybody into the tornado shelter. And the yada yada that this actor has chosen is all the way in. As though there's been a problem in the past. Of people being halfway in the tornado shelter. Remember what happened last time? Uh, Idiots. <laughs> I want that one character. All the Oh, yeah. Oh, that's All right. That's way, right. Yeah. He's missing an arm. He's like, yeah, yeah. no, I remember. Okay. <laughs> I do remember now. There is always that I guy do. in the disaster movies that has to stand there by the door and be like, this is where you go down yeah. the stairs. Yeah. I want to know how all the town dads negotiate who's going to be that guy. Oh, because you fight. know that's a prized possession. Yeah, that's a big fight. No, get in there. No, no, you get in there. I'm doing the thing. No, get in. Come on, everyone. In. Yeah, no, come on, everyone. I'm doing that too. We can, but I can do that better. I'm a bet. Hey, come on, everyone. In. You know, they probably fights break out. <laughs> that's how most men in tornadoes die is just not wanting to be the first to go in among the men. Yeah. And at this moment, Jesus, we're going to find out is just standing there, but we just see a guy standing there like fucking Superman ready to punch a tornado as it comes at him as everybody runs into the shelter. Yeah. And someone's filming it too. Yeah. Some random guy is filming it. And the pastor's like, hey, fucking Kyle, stop doing a live stream of, you know, the guy getting killed by a tornado right now. <laughs> this is why I said all the way in, Kyle. I know yeah. this is going to get yeah. you subscribers, but I need you. I need you to follow. So, yeah, we get the title credits. This show is called Messiah. We're going to cut over to our CIA good guys. Now, Matt, as our legal expert, do the CIA just kind of hang out waiting for signs Jesus. And, and symbols <laughs> for the savior? Well, they, they do have a Jesus tracking department. That's very important yeah. to understand. Yeah, they have like of, a whole unit. Yeah, the CIA. Of what yeah. we believe at this point are Syrian terrorists in Israel? Well, so there is one place in the world that the CIA can't do business. Anybody know where that is? The bedroom. America? The United States of America. And we're yeah. going to see Ooh. them doing a whole lot of business in our country. So that's coming yeah. up. The idea of the jurisdiction of the CIA is going to get thrown around a lot. I just want to be clear right up front. The jurisdiction of the CIA is the world, pretty much. They they follow, I mean, they, they're doing illegal stuff all over the world, but they can't do stuff here. You're going to see a lot of doing stuff here. And when they did stuff here, you might remember they did things like give people LSD without their knowledge. They did. Yeah. Sure, we don't let them do that anymore. 
I was about yeah. to say, I feel like they do stuff here. Oh, they got to slip Jesus some LSD. That would be... <laughs> Maybe they did. That's why he just sits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's just on an acid just trip the whole episode. Balls. The entire... That makes sense now. Okay. But it's post-Snowden, so you know how <laughs> there are phones, and after Snowden, every stupid person who's written a movie or a television show assumes that, like, it, we're tappity tap tap oh, tap away from seeing anything that's ever been shot on a phone. <laughs> Look, I'm going to pick my moments, but just to, to give microcosm of the stupidity of this show. So you've established it. It's a boardroom of the CIA who I guess from the past episodes, they're trying to find this Jesus guy, right? They're like, we, that's our number one job. We got to find Jesus. And one of them says, look at this and holds his phone. And it's the viral video of Jesus in a hoodie surviving a tornado. And we get not one, not two, but I believe three times that whoever's like the in charge CIA person has to be like, well, all right, stop that. What are we looking at? No, watch the video. All right. I don't see anything. There's a, no, no. Keep what you're like. Do you not understand that he would be showing you evidence that Jesus is there? Like she tries to stop him three times and he has to say just watch the video three fucking times yeah that's the dialogue of this goddamn show just say what's gonna happen in your video yeah. to start man yeah to, so that you don't keep talking past each other yeah you start it with hey someone saw jesus and then done you don't have to do the three times of yeah. asking i literally wrote in my notes this is like me sending heath and his fiance way too many tiktoks and they stop <laughs> responding <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the CIA's response to this is like, all right, well, scrub the entire internet. We can't have the I know. <laughs> son of God doing miracles in a video on the yeah. internet. That would fuck up our whole thing. Just can't go viral. You know how we have that button that's like erase all of the internet? Do that. Yeah. Yeah, you know how your grandma will occasionally be like, can anyone see my posts? I think I'm shadow banned from posting Myrtle's graham cracker crust recipe. They, she wrote this part of the, yeah, she wrote this part of the movie. It's the damn CIA. And then we get a guy from Homeland Security showing up at the church. Now, here's the thing. This scene takes up, I'm going to say, seven minutes of screen time. We watch him get in his car. We watch him drive his car. Mm -hmm. We watch him pull up to town. We watch yep. him get out of the car. We watch him walk up to the church. It won't matter. He's literally no. just the guy there to arrest Jesus, and he will never have any effect on the proceedings of the show. But fuck it if they were not going to fill 38 minutes in this first episode. So, yeah, a guy <laughs> shows up at a place. <laughs> So now we're going to cut inside the church where the preacher and Christ of Nazareth, who has returned to earth, <laughs> are making small talk, awkward yeah. small talk, yeah. but not good small talk, right? No. Not like, oh, so that See was a heck of a tornado, or, yeah. but like a, like a new girlfriend who he's been talking about <laughs> breaking up with a whole bunch to you privately and you don't know how much she knows. That kind of small talk is the kind they're having. I will never understand why people react this way to meeting Jesus. You know, like if it was me and let's, I'll go with it. Like I'll go with the thing. It's, oh, I believe in him. It's Jesus. I'm, I'm sitting here I'm talking next to Jesus. I'd be like, oh, okay. So I don't need to like try or do anything. Cause you, so you're, you're here. So everything's under control. You and God do everything now. Right. I don't, what should I do? Why am I even caring about anything? But they're always like, what, what should I do? Where, where do I go? I, my reaction would be complete nonchalance. I'd be like, oh, well, nothing matters now. Okay, cool. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. Problem solved. Yeah. Also, I like I like we learned something about the dynamic between Jesus and his dad, God, here for a second. Mm -hmm. So Pastor Felix is talking to Jesus and he asked him, like, okay, so you know, a lot of bad stuff happening in, in Palestine. I guess you were working on that. And then you you came here to my little town in Texas. Yeah. And Jesus says, Well, I I go where God takes me, whatever. And so, like, the dynamic is. <laughs> God is like a little league dad and Jesus doesn't want to play baseball. And God's just like, go <laughs> play, fix stuff in the world that I fuck up. Right. That I invented. Yeah. But he, he seems like awkward with Jesus. Like he doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> want to bring up the miracle he just witnessed him do, but that's okay. Before they can actually get to the meat of the conversation, FBI cop man unincorporated shows up to arrest him. Now, Matt, <laughs> As our legal expert, that's how it works, right? Just a guy comes in and says, you're arrested on behalf of America. <laughs> because I saw one guy who might have crossed the border. I got to tell you about this. This is, this is the first place in the show where I stood up and could not sit down again. It, it gets a lot worse than this, but this is the point where I was like... And not just because of the fursuit. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those tails are hard to sell, you know? 
He knows. <laughs> See, we're, we're, we're uncovering. There we go. We're cracking open. Please bucks. do not out my new co-host of Opening Arguments <laughs> as a furry. Eli, at least we wait a month. Our audience is accepting and loving of the furries. <laughs> Can you delay this recording at least like a month, man? I just got to get. No, you know, not I after gotta... what happened with senior pets. I can't do this. <laughs> okay. Can't have these pictures come out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but okay. Let me tell you about 8 U.S.C. 1325. And I'm telling you about that because the agent specifically walks in and says, I'm arresting you under 8 U.S.C. 1325. So we know that's what he's doing. That's the illegal entry statute. And illegal entry is kind of like drug dealing. You have to kind of catch the guy in the act. This is 90 miles from the Mexican border. I happen to know because I know where Dilly is. 90 miles. You're not going to get arrested for illegal entry 90 miles from the Mexican border. Well, yeah. Right. For all he knows, Jesus went through the proper channels. Right. You know, somewhere, right? Like, or he just like flew in normally. He doesn't know he did that. Okay. It's not, that, that's not a statute that's enforced <laughs> in the interior for good reason, because you have to find somebody pretty close to the border and, you know, prove that's how they got here. And the reason this really matters is because there's going to be a really open question for the next hour and a half about exactly what court Jesus is in and what charges he's facing. Now, we're being told straight up he's facing a criminal charge under 8 U.S.C. 1325, which carries up to six months in federal prison. But one dude, and it's an FBI agent, not DHS, and he's an FBI agent who's a member of the Joint Terrorism Task Force, has driven who knows how far across Texas to this rebel pile to arrest Jesus. One dude probably driving past tens of thousands of undocumented people on the way, right? Yeah. This is not something that the federal government does. They don't just wander around looking for undocumented people to arrest. They have a lot of other things to do. Right. Yeah, you'd think. So now we cut over to bad Mossad guy. He is torturing a teenager. Don't worry. This will never affect the plots of the movie or anything to do with what we're going to talk about. So let's see. We get a shot of the Messiah poutily looking out the window while he's driven to detention. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just looking at Texas all fucked up and he's just like, God, this fucking sucks here in Texas. Why did I come here? I was crucified. This sucks (laughs) here. (laughs) But if you want to know, they're like, oh, man, we do have to put some dialogue in the show because then we didn't do anything. So they're driving. They're just driving through the nothing. And Jesus Christ, the son of God says, oh, it's pretty empty out here. (laughs) (laughs) Texas, huh? And then the guy, the agent's like, yeah, no. That's it. That's all. Oh, that's yeah. the scene. That's the whole scene. I wrote this in my notes. I'm thinking of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Is it that you're the Messiah? Yeah. <laughs> I just love it. I love it. You can't write for God. No one, can, even a good writer would have a hard time, but you can't just definitionally, because it's a stupid concept, you can't write for jo- God or Jesus. So all you can do is vagueness. That's all you can do. So he has to say every Jesus character ever and everything. You guys are the experts at this. They have to barely say anything, look a little bit like, oh, oh, just kind of out of it. And and if they utter anything, it's like it's a nothing deepity or a nothing. And that's all they can do. Otherwise, it would blow the whole illusion. Yeah, I really he should have been like, oh, I got to take a piss. Can you pull over, please? I'm I gotta so sorry. So I, gotta, I have <laughs> really bad diarrhea. And also, you can't tell anybody because the Catholics had a big fight about whether I shit at all in the 16th century. And it's re- it's like a really big deal for them. <laughs> So we cut back to town. This is where we're going to introduce Matt's favorite villain of the program. This is where the preacher got him one of them fancy ACLU lawyers. <sighs> Matt, yeah. so a quick question. Do you have to pull strings to get the ACLU <laughs> to take up again? How, what favors do you have to do? And does it involve your fursuit that canonically you are wearing <laughs> during this record? <laughs> I'm going to pretend you didn't say that. And I'm going to tell you that if you've been on TV, you can get the ACLU to represent you. You don't have to pull strings. That's not how it works. He's calling in a favor. And like the guy for the rest of the season, the series, the guy acts like he did a huge favor. He actually at one point (laughs) refers to it as retaining Jesus a lawyer, which would, you know, suggest he might have paid for it. We're very clear that nobody's getting paid for this. But yeah, we'll we'll be talking about the ACLU. I hope the ACLU charged this guy (laughs) for for the free lawyer. You know, we don't usually charge people, but for you, my friend, 700 bucks an hour. But, you know, I do want to say just a huge opportunity lost here because... In my show, because there's a, there's a version of this I would write where you're deporting Jesus. I think it could work. You get hot Jesus hooked up with like a scrappy local small town Texas immigration lawyer. Yeah, that would be fun. That'd be like a whole series I'd watch. But the ACLU lawyer is just really stiff and villainous, like weirdly it's villainous. Terrible. We'll talk it's about. so badly written. Yeah, and I love the idea that he got him a lawyer, as you say. It's like, hey, give me the ACLU. Hey, ACLU, I've got a hot tip for you. It's the one case the whole country is watching right now. 
Yeah. <laughs> Go do it. That's my tip. I, I did it. Exactly. My tip is that you should be there. Yeah. But I will say, <laughs> if you wanted an amazing social commentary show, Jesus going through the regular immigration court yeah. process, yeah. just like, what do you mean you deported Jesus because there was room in the van? Which, <laughs> oh, man, I got to find. No, this isn't Jesus. This is a guy named Jesus. You can't give me a different guy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and th this is this is one of my favorite moments because this is in every TV show where CIA lady, she's doing CIA stuff in America the way mm -hmm. Matt has already established they're allowed to do. And she gets a call from her boss being like, hey, oh, yeah. CIA, not really supposed to be doing a lot at home. And she's like, give me two days. And her yeah. boss is like, well, we do have a 48 hour grace period. I know, I, oh, my God. I have that same <laughs> note. Eli. I'm, I, every time I'm always like, how do they come up with that? Like, why is, and it's always some unit that's either like 24, 48 hours. It's never like, well, you got, let's look at my watch. I think you have about 24, five, seven hours and 13 minutes, if I see right. It's always exactly 24. Let's get through this LSD. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I want to know what that deadline is and how they, they have an answer every, to every movie, every show. They always have an answer. You've got 24 hours. <laughs> Why? What is that? You can use the magic pumpkin to deport Jesus for two more days. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and we learn at the end of uh, episode four that this woman who's calling her is actually the director of the CIA. <laughs> so I guess she's getting like personal calls from the director. He's like, yeah, okay, fine. A couple days. She's, she's a hands-on like manager, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> She's really getting in there. She's, She's mixing it putting up. Putting in weekend hours calling. Hey, uh, I <laughs> director here. How's that Jesus track? What going? are you doing right now? <laughs> yeah. This is also where they establish the stakes of what will be the next episode. So I think it's good to about talking about it now. According to the show, right? Jesus has been arrested for illegal entry. And what the stakes of the show will now be about are whether or not he can be extradited to Israel. Hmm. Uh, kind of. But yeah, I was going to say, I actually have no fucking idea. It is I mean, is they, that they, how it works? Those are some words they use. Yeah. No, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. All right. So just, let's just spitball this here. If Jesus were actually arrested and were actually wanted, like extradited to Israel, and they, they say later on he's being extradited because he started a riot, which is a crime that basically matches up with a crime we have here. I don't know what federal crime it would be. It doesn't matter. But as long as it's like a credible claim that he's committed a crime, you stick him on the plane back to Israel. That's what you're doing. You're not arresting him for unlawful entry. You're not detaining him in this weird immigration facility we'll talk about. Mm. He doesn't have an ACLU lawyer. You don't need, need a lawyer for extradition proceedings unless you really want to fight him. So that never happens. That that would have been a very short show, though, I guess, if he just gets extradited to Israel. He just instantly gets the, ah, oh, shit, now I got to do the weird jail escape thing again. Yeah. <laughs> but very importantly, because I have to point this out, this will be the dramatic arc of the whole show, everybody. <laughs> CIA lady pulls over to throw up, which, mm. if you're conversant in movie, means she is either pregnant or has cancer. Yep, those are the two options. Yeah, exactly. But she's a lady, so come on, we all know what it is. All right, so now CIA lady's all done throwing up, so she is going to show up to interview Oh my Jesus. God, it's so good. It's so good. But FBI, who we currently think is Homeland Security guy, do <laughs> doesn't want to let her interview Jesus because I, of jurisdiction? He's probably like, what the fuck is the CIA doing here? That's, that's the appropriate <laughs> reaction. Right. Okay, they, they argue about jurisdiction for a second, and they her sure argument do. is... Okay, but uh, Hot Jesus crossed from Mexico into the United States. <laughs> Mexico is a Mexico word I just said. Is not a <laughs> and, and the FBI guy's like, you get the, the time dimension, right? He's here now, and that doesn't matter. You, you can't even be here. She's like, or can I? And she will be for the rest of the movie doing work yeah. in the U.S. <laughs> My jurisdiction. I, the way that she threw that around. I'm sorry. I just like the, the word jurisdiction gets used several times in this show, never correctly. And it doesn't get used in other times when I'd really like to know what the jurisdiction is. <laughs> but I will say I did learn. I, I did some research on this show. There was one consultant on this show. And you want to guess what that consultant specialized in? Uh, makeup consultant for hot Jesus. Hair <laughs> consultant. Hair Ooh, consultant. Yeah. This would be great if they exist. Yeah. Well, there's one thing he wasn't, and that was a legal consultant. We did not have a legal consultant on this show. You mount, I'm not surprised I can tell. to learn. Yeah, I, I, I can tell. I can oh, tornado tell. consultant. <laughs> no. Yeah. The one consultant they had was somebody who specialized in CIA. Really? So they think that they paid somebody to tell them what the CIA does, and this is what he gave them. 
Yeah. That person can't work in the United States, though. No, yeah. The, whoever that is should be fired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet that was like Moishi, who's been on our show, was just like, I could be a CIA consultant. They were like, here's a thousand bucks. Thanks so much. <laughs> And then we're going to get, this is the wrap up of episode three. We're going to get three scenes that don't matter. So I'll go through them very quickly. Israeli guy, remember Israeli bad guy? He's going to dump that teenager that he was torturing in the desert. Then he goes and drinks outside of his ex-wife's house. Uh -huh. And then in the final scene of the episode, which I found very disturbing, the CIA agent is washing some bloody sheets. So I was like, wait, was she there for the... The interview of the teenager, like, was she part of the torture? Are we going to find that out later? It will be answered in episode four, but the episode literally ends with her just watching bloody sheets move around in the laundry mat. It was very confusing for me. But wasn't she staying in a hotel? Yes, yes. she's in a hotel and it's <laughs> revealed she that she, her... she might have had a miscarriage by showing some blood and now she's washing her clothes. And there is an important metaphor at the laundromat. Bit of imagery? Yeah, I was, oh, I was hoping yeah. you would bring this up. So there's a bird in the laundromat. It's so bad. And she it's says so to her, she sees bad. the bird just flapping around and she's like, you're not where you're supposed to be. They tried. They're like, someone convinced them. They're like, guys, we gotta get something. I know we do a lot of slow motion -y, drony, nothing. Give me one metaphor. And they're like, okay, how about a bird that's stuck Sold. in... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. it's stuck, no, it goes worse because they're like, that's stuck in the laundromat, can't get out. It's not where it's, oh, okay, that's good. But how will anyone know what that means? And he's like, well, no, you just do it and then it's evocative. We'll cut you know, right like after that. To, and then it'll be to think, and like, No, they won't know what it means. Have the lady say, this is a bird that's stuck in the laundromat. And then that will make it work. And that's what they do. They have her just say what the metaphor is because they're, God forbid, <laughs> God forbid that we sit there and think about it for a second. Right. She says that out loud, and then you watch her be like... Yeah, to no one. Be like, wait a minute. No, that's nothing. That's nothing. I didn't know anything. <laughs> yeah, they tried to do a metaphor, but it literally flew away. It's great. You hate to see it. It sure does. And that's the end of episode three. So we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with episode four of Messiah. Behold, my children, for though this tornado destroyed your town, I have saved your church. Uh, Messiah, quick question. Please. It's Al Messiah. That's this is a different language. Anyway, sorry. Um, my question is, why? Why what? Why did you save the church? Oh, because I am the Messiah. No, no, we got that. But like, you could have saved pretty much any building and we would believe that you were the Messiah. And we'd have food. Right, food. Oh, no, I, I saved the church because I'm God, guys. Not the jolly green giant. Okay, uh, but now that you're here, are you going to, like, make us some food magically? Or fix our houses? No, I, I told you guys, my miracle was saving the church. Okay, so your miracle, just to be clear, was to watch our town get destroyed, except for the building dedicated to you, just that one, and, and now you're going to leave? Uh, Yeah. I mean, it sounds like God to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. Oh yeah, got us there. Okay. Matt, thanks so much for agreeing to help us with the second ad. Hey, no problem. Yeah, sorry about the, the muscle stuff. Yeah, we, we just got nervous. I understand. It's fine. Okay, great. So uh, this is for Mint Mobile. Yeah, we love these guys. And this is a script right here you just sent me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're just going to read that part right there. Okay. Hi, I'm Matt Cameron. If I had a nickel for every client that is in jail forever because they dropped a call... I'd have dozens of nickel. Guys, this isn't true. It's for the ad. Just, just go in. It's just for the ad. <sighs> okay, fine. Um, that's why there's Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. So you wanted up in jail for crimes you didn't commit like so many of my... Guys, I'm not supposed to lie like this. It's called motivating the customer mathematics. Exactly. I'm sorry. Do you think Matt is short for mathematics? He does, definitely. Just go ahead and continue. <sighs> Choose from the three, six, or 12 months plans and say goodbye to a monthly phone bill. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate, whether you're buying for one for a family or at Mint, families start at two lines. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get your first three months of premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. That's way less expensive than jail. 
Well, that's true anyway. Matt, please. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and then get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam, G-A-M. That's mintmobile.com slash G-A-M. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash G-A-M. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Nice. Thanks. Yeah, took him long enough. Oh, hey guys, sorry. What did I miss? Ooh, ooh, nobody say anything. Thomas, what do you think Matt is short for? Matthew? Bless you. Now answer the question. Can we leave soon? <sighs> and we're back. When we left off, we were watching literally the wash cycle Nothing. at a laundromat. Yeah. Nothing, <laughs> correct. Which I think was supposed to be re- evocative of the diarrhea that you feel when, I don't know. I yeah. Yeah. Even, Honestly, that's all I thought of when it was sloshing around in there. Yeah, I know. Another sweet metaphor. And now we get a cold open on a close-up of a brain scan. Somebody yeah. has brain movie cancer. Hey, podcast listener, let me do you a favor. It's me, your buddy, Eli. You will be confused about this brain scan until the last literal second of this episode. (laughs) So let me not waste your time. This brain scan, not about anybody you care about. Yeah. Now, she is the CIA lady we were just talking about. She's about to be in hospital for, as Heath mentioned before the break, she had a miscarriage. She had a miscarriage of her dead husband who, before he started chemo for his cancer, not the cancer we saw earlier in the show, a different (laughs) cancer. Okay, to be clear, it's a miscarriage, not a of her dead husband, that would be weird. Right. So her husband yeah. coomed into a Cadbury egg a certain amount of times before he started chemo. She's been trying to in vitro fertilize herself. But if you want to know how the show gives us that particular bit of information, so we have a, a gynecologist or whatever who's just nagging, harassing the CIA lady about her miscarriage. So we got brain cancer. We got a brain shot of a brain tumor. And then we get straight to her. And I'm like, her brain caused a miscarriage? Is that what they're trying to... <laughs> Tell us. That is the uh, only yeah. way Never. to interpret it yeah, if you watch this in order way. and we don't tell you. Yeah. yeah. It's the only way to interpret it. And then we get a harassing conversation. And then finally, because this 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 doctor's giving her such a hard time, she's like, she's like, where's your husband? Where's you want me to call your husband? You want me to call your husband? She's like, he's dead. He banked his sperm before he died. And then she says, oh, I'm sorry. But I feel like they should have said that after the he's dead, not because it sounds like she's sorry that he banked his sperm. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they present you that information. He's dead. He banked his sperm. Oh, okay. Sorry. Also, detail about this very sad, dark conversation. It happens while Ava is the name of this woman, the CIA agent, while Ava is like in the stirrups, like mm-hmm. legs. At, like, I feel like if you have a long, dark conversation, you let the person like, Sit up. Put on their I, underwear. I've never been to an OBGYN. Yeah, she's not but, currently giving an exam. Like, yeah. <laughs> Seems like you just sit. I actually have been to a lot of these, Heath. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've yeah. been to several, uh, almost a, a two digit number of these appointments, kind of, not for miscarriages, but related. And yeah, usually they're pretty nice and they don't make you sit in like the ready to put a hand in you position. Unless they're actually going to put a hand in you, you know, like that would have been my assumption. Usually they have some common yeah. decency. Imagine if you went to like the proctologist or whatever you need. To- I just like my office to smell like open butthole. <laughs> I just like a, yeah. I like people to air the them. The moment you get to the proctologist, you have to <laughs> bend over and open it. Yeah. Not only that, like after the after the exam where they've already done the like gonna, you know, stick the finger up your butt. Pretend that's already happened. Then he comes back in the office to like give you the news. And he's like. We'll get back in the position though. Like, get, <laughs> go, go, so I'm a proctologist. On. I'm yeah. not here to. I'm <laughs> not a psychiatrist. You, okay, just unless your asshole is ready. Spread your ass cheeks. Okay, <laughs> so that incredibly confusing scene. Now it's time to take a look. We're we're over at the detention center, and the ACLU is going to talk to Jesus. And again, as Matt pointed out earlier in the episode, the ACLU are supposed to be like the uncooperated nitpickers of the law. So she's like, you sure you don't want to tell me all your deepest, darkest secrets, Jesus? And he's like, "Mm, I'm Jesus Christ. I don't care for the ACLU. (laughs) This conversation starts with, I'm the best at what I do and I am going to win this for you, which is of course what I'm always saying. I'm always saying. You announce that to clients? All the best lawyers are always saying that. Yep. Okay. (laughs) I'm the greatest Messiah-based anti-deportation <laughs> attorney in the country from the ACLU. In case anyone hasn't gone through, I don't know, like a bunch of legal proceedings, lawyers, no, they don't, 
They don't really do that. They're pretty modest. They don't, yeah. No, they mostly just send you bills. In my experience, yeah. <laughs> it's most, it's a billing-based profession with occasional disappointing statements. Yeah, if, some, if a lawyer says this to you, walk away quickly. Yeah. Yeah. But then there's this conversation after she says she's the best ever, where she tells him straight up, you're not getting bail. You're not getting out of here, which is the opposite of what I'd be telling him at this point, because you've got somebody who's right. internationally famous at this point, doesn't have access to a passport, which is kind of a problem, but he's going to be sticking around. He's not going anywhere. And there are a bunch of people ready to take him in, right? There's this pastor who's already obsessed with him. So this is a bail case. I don't understand. Like, just from, the, <laughs> yeah. from off the top, she's telling us she's not a good lawyer. And she's going to prove that over and over again, every scene. Well, she also says, yeah, I'm going to win this for you. Also, you're going to lose is what it sounds yeah. like. <laughs> which, okay, literally true because this is an illegal entry case. Yeah. And she thinks that they've got him nailed, which is really funny because again, they found him. I would love this illegal entry case. Show me the illegal entry. Yeah. Where's the video? Like, where, where's any evidence he was anywhere near the border? That's what I want to ask. Do, do a little OA for us. <laughs> what? Okay. He's charged with the illegal entry. What would she need from him? Like she's going, her, he, she's the lawyer. She wants to go defend Jesus. What's she asking? Like, you take that case, Matt. What are you asking him? What do you need from him? What are you doing to try to get out of this? Well, the first thing I'm telling him is do not, under any circumstances, talk to the judge, which he's going to do, obviously. <laughs> she doesn't want to do that. But no, I, I should explain before we get too much deeper into this, that this criminal charge is for illegal entry. And that is something that was actually used during the family separation disaster because that that was what caused it, was Jeff Sessions was doing 100% enforcement of the illegal entry statute to everybody they caught coming through. Doesn't apply to the situation, but usually what happens and what's been happening, you know, for mo all of my career is that people are not charged with illegal entry. They're charged and sent into immigration court for illegal presence, unlawful presence, which is a, a civil thing. And it's a completely different procedure, different judge. Mm. It's not in the judicial branch. He's supposed to be going into a court that's in the executive branch that the president has full control over, as we'll find out later. And uh, this is just the beginning of it, but just the idea that they, they didn't take the time to figure out whether he was charged with a crime or not, because they keep throwing around back and forth. I'll, I'll mark this as we go. All right. So <laughs> now we get our shot of the detention center general. And I like that this TV show made to show us, see, nobody's in a cage. I mean, it's... Except for Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. It's, it's, it's kind Lord of a is, savior. Yeah. Is in a cage. big cage, but, <laughs> but they're not small cages. Like you expected. They have everyone, they have, they have women, children, families yeah. out on the floor. Sleeping on the floor. And he gets like his own batting cage. <laughs> yeah. I'd be mad about this one guy getting like an en yeah. cage of his own. That's kind of bullshit, right? <laughs> How in this situation would Jesus not give up the bench? Come on. I mean, he's <laughs> yeah. a whole bench. Yeah. But let me tell you, again, I've been to a lot of ICE facilities. I know what goes on down there. I mean, the, the, he's supposed to be in CBP detention under these circumstances. It's cool, just, right? Just it's awesome. Right. Yeah, it's, it's they great. treat it's, him real I, well. And anybody should do a night or two there just to enjoy the food. But the thing is <laughs> that this was made in 2017. And this goes, I have a theory, a very firm theory that this is not helping with, or it is helping with, I should say, that there was no great art made during the Trump years about the Trump years. We're not, maybe it's, it's still coming, mm. but this is a desperate attempt to try to tell us about Trump's immigration policies. And it fails so badly because I guess for me, because I want to see what he was actually doing, not Jesus in a cage with some people that he'd never been in a detention center with facing charges that don't make any sense. That's just me. Yeah, it's like, you remember that scene in All the Lights We Cannot See where he's like, someone should write this book, but I don't know that it should be us. That's how I feel about the writer of this television yeah. show. It's like, yeah, someone should write this book, right. but it definitely shouldn't be episode four of Messiah, you fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then the Dilly thing too. I mean, I was thinking about that. Like God has bad aim. If they're trying to make a point about family <laughs> detention, right? They should have taken out the facility, obviously evacuate everybody. And then, you know, tornado takes out the facility. That would have been nice. First, yeah. he unlocks all the doors. Yeah, exactly. He's got a plan and everything. Sure. But she also gets a call at this point. Ava, the CIA lady who has a yeah. name, thank you, gets a call from un not Homeland Security. Unknown. And she picks up like a crazy person. Yeah. Right. She and, picks and, up. And how, how did she get? She had a dramatic escape from being like detained because she had a first trimester miscarriage. They're like, we're keeping you here for observation. Like, oh my God. It's okay, so man, funny. Sure. It's, it's honestly my favorite moment is she gets a call from cop guy and he's like, hey, you can come illegally interview Jesus. And she's like, great. <laughs> and we watch her pull out her IV like straight out. <laughs> yeah. Like I would give anything. Crazy Billionaire remake. She pulls it straight out. She just gushes blood. She's like, oh shit, almost killed myself. <laughs> Why does she have an IV? Okay, whatever. So now it's time for her big first face-off with Jesus. 
Yeah. And it starts with a shot of sex hair that he has. It's like a shampoo commercial start. Oh, and then God, they do yes. an interrogation. Also, and look, we'll talk about the specifics of this, but can we talk about the fact that she doesn't really seem to pick a tactic, right? No. Because she comes in with like a, ooh, I'm one of your followers. And he's like, don't you work for the CIA? And she's like, I'm a bad cop. Fucking he's like, got me. Right. Yeah. Too firm of a switch. Yeah. Too firm. No, I mean, I'm literally following you. <laughs> yeah. The point is that like Jesus Christ is the world's greatest rogue spy and he's evading the CIA and Mossad and everything. What makes this scene different? He's, he's the Maspia. <laughs> all right, all right. Fantastic. What makes this scene difficult to write is what the fuck is she trying to do? Great What is question. she trying to do? What is she getting out of this? What does anyone want here? What does it matter? What could she do in this situation? Right? Yeah. Let's say she's 100% effective and she absolutely cracks this guy who is a Syrian spy pretending to be the Messiah. Weird fucking tactic. But let's say it works, right? And he's like, yes, I really do miss mama and papa back in Bayonne, New Jersey. Which he's, there's nothing you, the CIA, can do. Uh, you know what? I'll have a word with my boss who I fucking text all the time, apparently. I think that could be useful here. Like most of the job of a CIA officer is is pointed banter with a prisoner and you trick him into something like you get you do a verbal trap and then you win yeah and then in this case the messiah is like okay what's that Heath, tell me what it would be i ordered the code red what would it be <laughs> <laughs> so there's nothing there's no inf these people are so fucking dumb there's no information she needs there's no there's not there's nothing she can trick no, him into saying no, there's nothing there's nothing they try though they show us she's like listen i can help you if you cooperate and he's like yeah i'm I'm the son of God. I'm all set. I don't need help. I got a guy. <laughs> Thanks, though. I got a guy. And she's like, what if I'm part of God's plan? And he's like, you are part of God's plan. <laughs> and she's like, so Damn don't it. stop. Please. Don't backsee my, you know, no frenzies <laughs> backsees with my weird plan. And I, I also, I just have to include this because, hey, guys, what's the best book ever that Jesus would absolutely make reference to <laughs> if he was Catcher there? Catcher in the uh, fucking yeah. rye is what they went with. <laughs> Seriously, oh, they're trying no. to do this banter moment. And if, if I'm bantering, I'm doing pointed banter. I'm in the CIA. I'm trying to trip up Jesus Christ. And during that banter, he makes a literary allusion to fucking catcher in the rye. I'd be like, come on, really? You're the son of God. You're going with a high school book so bad. reference. It's so you bad. You could say that I am the giver. <laughs> in a way, we're all killing the mockingbird. <laughs> exactly. I'm the great Gatsby. Yeah. Okay, man. Yeah, relax. okay. Yeah, so he doesn't cooperate, but he does do. Now, I have to point out, because again, this show will do this throughout the entire show until the very last episode where he brings a guy back from the dead in a field full of flowers. Spoiler alert. But the show will do like a does he have powers or does he not? Yeah. And so the way they try to do it in this scene is that he cold channels her, but like, yeah, kind of accurately and kind of not. He's like, you are working. On a Sunday. And she's like, yeah, well, sure. And he's like, also, you had a husband. Yeah. <laughs> he's at the exact note. He's not even better than a run of the mill, like cold reading psychic. He's like, and you have a husband and I'm seeing someone with an S name. Who's, yeah. who's, who has an S name? Anybody? Right. Oh, it's, you're the only one in this room. Um, does that resonate for you? He knows what day of the week it is. That's, that's his reason. Yeah, exactly. He's not supposed to be working. Might be workaholic. I don't know. That's a, that's an easy one. And but she is rocked by this information. She's yeah. like, "Holy yeah. fucking shit! Get out Sunday. of my head!" <laughs> Seven of diamonds. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> yeah, the Messiah. <laughs> so she leaves. An FBI comes in, and this never comes back. It doesn't matter. But I do have to point it out. FBI comes in and removes a recorder the size of a fucking <laughs> pumpkin from underneath the. The fact that the first thing is this phone. It's a it? phone. Yeah, it's a phone. Huge phone. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, I thought it was supposed to be okay. That makes me feel so much better. Yeah, what's massive? I think there's. It starts with a close up on a phone. To be fair to Eli, <laughs> he saw a very large phone. I suppose. Yeah, I saw this note, Eli, and I was like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It's just a phone. It's an iPhone. Oh, I okay. I thought it was supposed to be a secret. He hit his phone under the table. That makes me feel yeah, a little better because yeah. I thought it was supposed to be a secret recorder. So when he came in and pulled out this brick sized object, yeah. I was like, Ooh, this raises an interesting question. What does he want? <laughs> what does he need in this? What is he trying to do? Why is he hanging around? What does anyone want? Yeah. There's nothing. What does he want? Oh, I'm going to hear that 
They talked. I don't know. There's nothing. There's fucking nothing. Something with the word jurisdiction is all I have. <laughs> jurisdiction. It's the perfect. Yeah. I'm going to find out whose jurisdiction this jurisdiction really is. Jurisdiction crime. Yeah. <laughs> In the recording, it's going to be her being like, it isn't my jurisdiction. Got her. <laughs> Got her. <laughs> Nailed it. I had a quota of one illegal entry case this week, this month, and I am seeing it through. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to cut to... CIA lady talking to her boss. They're having an argument about whether or not the the CIA can detain him. Matt, help me out. What's going on right <laughs> the now? The literal line, I wrote it out. He's not under CIA jurisdiction on U.S. soil. You know that. This is from the director of the CIA to an elite Jesus tracker. I think she knows that. <laughs> <laughs> I think she knows. And she also just told somebody 20 minutes ago that this was her jurisdiction. So she's going to keep quiet about that, I guess, now. But again, reminding us the CIA should not be doing any of this. And then reminding us once again, in case we've been listening, Israel also wants him extradited. So that would solve the problem. If you want to get him out of here, you don't have to detain him. You don't have to charge him with any of this. And then they say things are being handled, which I think is very funny because it's not happening. But unless we're, this is like the one thing we're trying to say no to Israel on, he's going to get extradited. I was, I was just going to, does this show, th maybe that's the confusion. Does this show think that like, Israel is like Russia. Right. And then we're in a cold war with Israel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If Israel gets him, we'll never. What are you talking? We give them billions and billions, especially this is came out in 2020. I guess it was, you know, made earlier. But like, yeah, we give them everything they want. They're our closest fucking ally in the world. Why would we, we be worried about the, him going to Israel? It doesn't make right. any sense. The idea that we would be choosy about handing a terrorist over to Mossad, <laughs> not right. super accurate, canonically no. speaking. No. Okay. They're implying throughout all of this that like pretending to be the Messiah is like a serious international crime. That's the only conclusion <laughs> I can draw. <laughs> like 8 U.S.C. 1325. I just told you about that. Yeah. Yeah, There's yeah, exactly. one thing the U.N. actually does agree on. You're not allowed to You're do this, You're not allowed man. to pretend to be the Messiah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But now... But now it go. is time for Beefleton, Bethesda, and Wright's best worst. It is time <laughs> for protest signs. And my friend, he did not begin to tell you how bad these protest signs are. One of them literally says, the tornado is your fault. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Fucking teleport better, asshole, the sign. Yeah. Couldn't also, have done an open field, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are they protesting God then? Are they, I don't, who's protesting yeah. what here? Oh, it is not clear. They First of all, there's no like good side, bad side. The protesters are quite literally just milling about in the background and are accordingly <laughs> confused because some of them are like, I'm here for Jesus. And some people are like, I'm here for Jesus. It's, it's yeah, how you read it. <laughs> okay, the, the two sides would have to be, the two sides would have to be one side is either he's real Jesus and therefore don't hurt him or also just anti, you know, our immigration system. That would be one side, right? The other side would be, nah, fuck him, he's a terrorist, right? It would be like, fuck him, he's a terrorist, immigrants suck. That would be the two sides. You would not have a side that is, well, I believe that he is the son of God and therefore the tornado was his doing but I'm anti him, you know, like I believe he's Jesus, but like I'm criticizing follow the proper his protocols. Jobs. Yeah. Did a yeah. shitty job. Yeah, exactly. Got that's, him. That's the centrist of him. He's like, guys, guys. The media introduction to this, I just have to point out over the terrible protest signs, they say a spotlight has been shown today on the president's immigration policies. And I'm just sitting there like, what policy? What is like detaining hot Jesus? Like that's the policy because it, <laughs> walking into a church and grabbing one guy and charging him with a crime that he can't possibly prove 90 miles from the board. What is the policy? I don't know. Yeah. We're to believe, we get a shot of who the chief of staff later or something. Yeah. And we're to believe that the president, this is supposed to be Trump, right? The president's supposed to be Trump. Yeah. We're to believe that he's like, hey, this Jesus thing right. is giving us a bad image. Wipe it down. We want to <laughs> secretly do the do the separating. No, yeah. they wanted to do that for attention. Like it's right. literally the opposite. They want, they would want this. Yeah. Oh, about what's great. does Jesus, does he have a young child we can separate from Jesus? That'd be great. Can we do that too? That's what they would want. Yeah. And well, and as his lawyer, his extremely good ACLU lawyer says in the next scene, <laughs> whether he entered the country illegally or not is beside the point. And no, that is literally the entire point. <laughs> That's what he's charged with. Illegal entry. That's the name of the offense. Your Honor, my client may have murdered this man, but the yeah, question is the whether or it's not like the he... Monty Python where he's like, let us not argue about who killed who. You know, basically that. Like, yes. No, that's the trial. That's what we're doing. 
okay, were they setting up like a blood feud in the Republican Party between like, okay, well, obviously, you know, Jesus Christ, son of God, we're pro that, but Arab looking guy crossed a border. So Got like, I don't know which we think <laughs> is more important. And I think that is what's happening here, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. we all know which would happen. They, they would <laughs> yeah. just be anti-immigrant. That's yeah. all they would do. But they didn't do a good job of any of this. And I would like to point out that the, the ACLU lawyer, who's the best and the best and the best, sir, is so great. She starts the trial. The judge is like, all right, let's, I don't know how any of this works, but somebody <laughs> start talking is how the judge starts it. And she's like, all right, I would like to say something. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Is a tight deadline. I don't know what's happening here, but I think that this is bad. And that's like her opening statement. She's yeah. like, this is too fast. I'm not prepared. She's, so bad. She's opening the trial the same way Thomas <laughs> opens opening arguments now. It's just like, I didn't get it. I'm sorry. It's been a crazy, horrible week. I just, uh, what, what happened, Matt? <laughs> like, okay. Matt might as well pop up and be like, well, I'll, I'll sum it up for everybody. who yeah. listened. <laughs> well, I do have to stop for a minute and point out which court we're in, because before we talk about this courtroom scene at all, we got to set up what the court is. And I can't tell you because again... <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to try to break it down as quickly as possible. I don't want to get in the weeds too much, but you have to understand just when I rattle these words off, how stupid this is. So there's a, there's a placard behind the judge that says executive office for immigration review. That's the immigration court. So that's an executive mm. court that the president controls that is not a judicial court. So great. It's an immigration judge, except that he's considering a crime, which immigration courts don't do. Mm. The government is called the prosecution, which would suggest it's a federal district court where he's being charged with a crime. But he's being called the respondent, which is what you call people in immigration court. <laughs> so it's just a big old mess. <laughs> and she's trying to apply for Convention Against Torture Relief, which, by the way, is completely the wrong thing to apply for, for somebody who just got here who's not an aggravated felon. I don't know what she's doing. I mean, he's eligible. You got asylum right there, and she's not asking for it. There's a lecture about expedited removal, which is something that only happens with ICE, doesn't happen in court. Yes, he <laughs> declares it. Yeah, he's it's like, the yeah, end of the scene. Yeah. Yeah. He's exactly. like, I declare a fast one. Yeah, <laughs> because the stature of the case. Because he's famous. Okay, this whole nonsense scene happens so fast, too. This is a, yeah. supposed to be a hearing. The defense lawyer stands up and is like, okay, my client's going to get tortured if you let Israel extradite. Okay, prosecution, you go. Prosecution is like, yeah, all right, he did a bunch of crimes in Israel, so that's why we're pushing for this. Also, this is one of my favorite lines of the movie. Also, we're not going to call him fucking Mr. Messiah. That's ridiculous. We're not calling him Mr. Messiah. You can't do that. And the defense is like, my client wants an alias. He gets to pick Mr. Messiah if he wants to do an alias. <laughs> Matt, this is so important. Matt, this is so important. Zoom in. Yeah. Do I get to pick my name in trial? That, thank you. That was my question. Because I'm in deep legal risk on all time. At all times. Right now. In all places. Right now, especially. Well, it's like the arcade where you get to enter your initials. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Matt. Matt. When you read about me in the paper and they call me Mr. Potato Goofs, know <laughs> that you made me murder those kids. It's only fair you get to pick your name. Matt, do you open up a hearing by saying, and, uh, you know, Judge, as you've surely seen in the news, this is that how you start? <laughs> judge, you watch <laughs> yeah. the news, right? You follow, them, but you, follow them, but you follow me on Twitter. I've been tweeting about this a lot. Do I need to catch you up or what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. So this this hearing, I, like you said, it's super fast on purpose because then we might start to notice, lawyers might start to notice that this is garbage. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, it happens so quick. They get like a sentence each and then the judge is like, okay, uh, I'm ignoring all that. I don't even know why I let you talk at all. <laughs> He's a flight risk, no bail. The next thing's in three days, we're extraditing. I declare fast uh, talking. Everything about that. And also the fact that you're going to go to trial in two days on something would be very complicated. <laughs> now, again, I should say Convention Against Torture is not something you couldn't apply for. Like that would be st st stapled onto this claim, but you'd start with asylum because that's the better deal. But two days is a tremendous due process violation. That would get flipped on appeal immediately. Like there's no reason to do that. <laughs> and it's just... Because he's if it's the stature of the case, that's what the judge says, makes no sense. Stature but, of the case. This okay. is a very important case, which is why both of you have just 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and that two day rule again. The world is watching. He's like, you have 48 hours. <laughs> he might as well set a giant clock that has like a yeah. hand moving. And they, yeah, totally. they get their tiny little time. And then <laughs> at the end, the defense lawyer is like, Your Honor, you gave us like, 30 seconds on a weird clock that you have. Hammer, hammer. I didn't hammer while you were talking. Hammer, and hammer. hammer. The happens and that's it. That's the <laughs> end of this tiny hearing. Yeah. Matt, you have to tell me, have you ever gotten hammered while you were talking and how did it feel? <laughs> Are you asking me if I've ever shown up to court hammered or if I've been hammered? No. Well, yeah, actually, no, both, both questions. Both, for sure. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I neither, neither. I, uh, I say, yeah, sorry. All right. You hate to see it. I, I don't. Yeah, that doesn't happen. But I, I just want to mention too, the thing he does, the purpose of this hearing ostensibly is it's a bail hearing. So they're trying to decide if hot Jesus can get out while he's pending his extremely weird case. And the judge finds immediately without going through a dangerousness analysis as they should do for bail, uh, he goes straight to flight risk and he says, no, you know, this guy who's been on TV for all this time, he doesn't have a passport that lots of people are willing to take in and has huge support, flight risk, can't let him out. So. Yeah, you know, they should have done that argument. It would have been hilarious because like yeah. the defense, the ACLU lawyer would be like, oh, he's, you know, he's not hurting anybody. He's got, he's got uh, uh, this priest that's willing to take him in. He doesn't need bail. And then the the prosecutor or whatever the fuck, the other side could be like, uh, your honor, this man killed an entire town with a tornado. He's wanted in several <laughs> jurisdictions. We yeah. cannot let him out. Totally. <laughs> uh, we, we have reason to believe he's responsible for all the cancer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Plus, have you seen those cheekbones? We can't let those out on the street. Yeah, yeah. come on. <laughs> Very important point. So yeah, that's how court cases work. I don't think Matt knows what he's talking about, but that is yep. how it's portrayed, <laughs> and I believe it. Clack, clack. We learned a lot. I think we deserve a break. But first, let me give act whatever the hard sell. Will hot Jesus be a successful immigrant? Does he get us? Who started all the wars? Find out the answer to that last one is God when we return for the lawtastic conclusion of Messiah. Episode three and four. Johnson, where are you? I'm in Mexico, Chief. I'm hot on this lead and I'm going to nail this bastard. Uh, sorry, did you say Mexico? Yeah, I'm hot on this guy's trail. Uh, okay, right. It's just we don't have jurisdiction in Mexico because that's not America. But Chief, I, I might lose him. Yeah, that's probably why he went to Mexico. But you know that we're not like cops for the whole world, right? I'm sorry, boss, but I hunt evil wherever it lurks. No, oh, no, you do not. You don't. You hunt evil in, in America, but actually, the idea that you hunt evil at all is kind of problematic, isn't it? Come on, chief. Two days. No, no, zero days. You come back, and I, honestly, I will fire you because you've already broken international law. Tell him I went rogue. I mean, I will arrest you. You want me to arrest you and send you to jail? D no, I, I just I. I went rogue, like like where you still help me, but like I'm I'm rogue, you that know. That is that's not a thing. All right, Chief. Monday morning, expect my gun and my badge. Yes, thank you. You are fired. Damn it, you son of a bitch! I'm back in. Okay. So it's a dog that can fly. I mean, it's a pug of corn with wings, man. Hey guys, you ready for the last part of the episode? Sure. Where uh, where were you guys? Oh, uh, Heath was helping me to not shop. Not shop? Yeah, I sort of follow Eli around stores and tell him what he can and can't afford. He wants to buy a lot of snow shovels for some reason, cannot afford it. I do. I do. It's true. It is true. Well, Eli, if you need help managing your finances, why don't you try Rocket Money? Oh, what's Rocket Money? Come on! Again! <sighs> Thomas explained it to me on the break. I did, yeah. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill, and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Wow, that sounds way easier. Than convincing Eli he's actually allergic to certain brands of snow shovel? It is. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. All right, Thomas, we're sold. Where do I sign up? Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. That's rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. Rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. Thanks. Can someone help me get my car out when we're done with this? I kind of got snowed in in there. We can help you with that, yes. Like a lot. And we're back. When we left off, the two-minute deportation hearing of an Arab guy was way slower than we all expected, honestly. <laughs> and now we cut over to Ava, the CIA operative, oh, on the phone Christ. with her boss. You know what I love about this show? The law is so bad. We actually, Matt, you can leave. We don't even need, it's so terrible. You don't yeah. even need a legal expert. <laughs> no, this is. She's talking and she's like, hey, let's, uh, the CIA boss, the, again, the head of the CIA is just always on the phone with this one person. And she's like, you need to, you need to concentrate. You know how we do stuff in other countries? We got to do that. Like you got to 
put an end to this. You said I have two days for Messiah stuff. <laughs> She's like, all it's right. It's been 46 hours. And, and let me know if I got this wrong. She says, let's cut a deal with his lawyer. Yeah. Am I? She's not the other lawyer. In the thing, am I crazy? No, and and what deal, deal? What would it be Does, <laughs> to get it? Because what they want is to have him sent to to CIA detention and and then extradited. I guess there's a deal to have him just immediately extradited. That'd be a good deal for them. But that's a whole. That's not the trial we're having, right? I mean, no, what? sure isn't. And she can't offer a deal on behalf of the federal government for the 8 USC 1425 thing. So I don't know. It makes no sense. Ava just shows up anyway at the ACLU lawyer's room and is like, I want to offer you a deal. And yeah. the lawyer's like, her hotel room. Nope. Yeah. Just, we're just going to do the court thing. And she has to start by condescendingly telling the ACLU lawyer what just happened in the hearing they were at. Hey, <laughs> the judge said, yeah, I was there. No, I, I, I know. <laughs> we were, that was five minutes ago. We were both there. Did you see him set the giant clock and <laughs> hover my client over a bunch of sharks? Yeah, no, I was there. I was there. <laughs> okay, and doesn't Ava say something like, oh, you just want to lose on purpose yeah. to, God, to help what? out the image of the ACLU or something? What does the movie think is happening here? We're, we're supposed to think that the ACLU is the villain here and that when they get involved with things that it's just for whatever. And this is so weird. If you're trying to tell a story about how bad Trump's immigration policies are, the ACLU are one of the legitimate heroes in that story. Yeah. So Yeah, you know who needs a beating? The ACLU. Let's take yeah. them down a peg in this whole family separation thing. <laughs> so. yeah. They have their own Christian movie, Bingo Square, for a reason, Thomas. <laughs> oh, that's true, yeah. Well, she goes on to show that she's a terrible lawyer because she accuses Ava of having violated her client's right to due process by going to visit him without an attorney. And of course, I think maybe we all know that's a violation of his right to counsel. <laughs> the judge just violated his Fifth Amendment right to due process when we saw him set the trial date for two days out. But, you know, I, I care about this stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Why stop there? I wonder why the judge wasn't like, hey, I'm setting the trial date for yesterday. Oh, oh, OK. Already done. <laughs> You lose. That's a due process <laughs> problem. But like, yeah. to just throw it back, it's like, here's some legal words. They just, it, it's, it's Mad Libs. It's really just Mad Libs. <laughs> yeah. So now we're going to get a quick shot of the kid that the Mossad guy beat up earlier. Remember him? Yeah. He's wandering through the desert and he sees a tiny sand tornado. A little, yeah. Like the little tornado from Super Mario 3, I think. That yeah, one exactly. That comes in. It's following him too. Okay. To me, that's not a clear sign at all. It's supposed to be like no. a magical guide from the Messiah. Is it? But if I saw that, I wouldn't like just follow it necessarily. I wanted the kid to just walk the other way and then the Messiah guy be like, fuck. <laughs> ah. Sends a right. couple more to like guide him back the People other way. People tend to avoid <laughs> tornadoes, right? Okay. I'll use them kind of like a... Wait. Am I the only one here who went to Sunday school? This is a Bible story, right? Oh, is it? This is definitely a Bible story. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think this does reference something in the Bible where a, a little sand thing. It's the yeah. Job from inside the tornado yeah. thing. Yeah. Is a guy. Oh, I don't actually know that. Oh. How quickly you yeah. forget your old podcast, Thomas. Totally forgot. Yeah. How quickly you forgot. <laughs> but they, they confirmed, the movie, the show confirms that that is what was happening. Because then we cut to the Messiah meditating because he needs to meditate to do sand tornadoes across the globe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's force projecting. He's, I had the same totally. thought. He, he's force projecting and you wanted it to be like something wakes him up and then the tornado goes away or whatever. Yes, That's I wanted I was... another prisoner at the detention center to just like bother him about some bullshit and he's like, come on, I'm doing a sand. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, great. Now it's gone. Now it's gone. You see the, you see the tornado turn and be like, hey, stop bothering me. Like it's actually doing the same thing. <laughs> we watched the tornado taking a shit because he got food poisoning from dinner the night before. The government attorney comes over to check out the, like the live feed. Like she stops in. Yeah. We, and we don't know if she's a, an attorney for DHS or DOJ, never established, but she stops mm. in just to check it out and just on a whim to get this video, which is going to become relevant later. Just wanted to point that out. That's oh, right. right. Yeah. She watches him meditating Evidence. and the fact that he's just doing that will matter later to her. That's going to be her Columbo moment. As a prosecutor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we cut over to preacher guy. He's going to go follow Jesus. And the wife is like, oh, but remember our whole town was destroyed and everyone needs you right now. And he's like, right, no, no, right. I got to follow Jesus. And the only reason I point out this scene is he goes, I think he's the, and she says, say it. And I want him so badly for him to be like vampire. <laughs> Whenever, <laughs> yeah. any, since Twilight, anytime someone has said, say it, I have said most often out loud vampire. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to highlight that. Like, if you think we were going to get any more detail into the family drama that was going on there, we get, okay, you ready? Let's figure out what's happening. 
there's conflict there. You know, she's clearly sad about something. And he's like, look, I know things are hard and we haven't been happy, but, and she's like, but what? That's it. That's all we're going to get. That's it. Uh, things are hard <laughs> right. and we haven't been happy. That's the conflict. That's why he was going to check notes. Burn down a church? I don't fucking know. Yeah, this okay. was the biggest, like, dumb Christian moment for me in, in the whole <laughs> yeah. thing. So Felix, the pastor, is like, I have to be with him. He says that to his wife as he's leaving. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, that's fucking dumb. By the way, they got that part of the Christian marriage right. They just didn't get any of the rest yeah. of it. Yeah, I didn't get <laughs> no. any of it. The dude being like, I have to be with him. Yeah, no, yeah. She, and she's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Explain the plot of the movie as best you can to me right now, Felix. And, <laughs> and he does. He tries. He's like, I was going to burn the church for insurance money, and then God God called a timeout on dealing with Palestine to help me personally <laughs> on this journey. I'm going to call you out one, Heath. You, with your smart brain, came up with the insurance money reason because that would actually make sense. The movie, the show, does not say that. Oh, does they don't, not they say don't that. use those exact words. What are they? What is the movie show trying to claim? For all we know, he just says, I was going to burn down the church because like, I'm just, you know. Fuck that building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the time to tell her. She's, he's a total pyro. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a little lukewarm on Christianity. I was going to burn the church down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the conflict that you and I both know about that we're not going to name the, in our family, that definitely real fleshed out family drama that we have here that we're both we're thinking of it. Are you thinking of it? I'm thinking of it. Thinking of it right I now. was going to burn down the church because of that very tangible problem. Yeah. I also love that she's like, this town needs you. And I wanted to say, well, no, you're in luck. The tornado literally flattened the entire town. Yeah, you're good. There is yeah. no more town. So Relieved okay. of duty. And now his <laughs> yeah. watch has ended. I will say I like that the Texas power grid seems to be improved by the tornado. That, <laughs> yeah, it's much better. Like all the yeah. ones are working. Yeah. She throws it back in his face like, you've already retained him a lawyer. You don't have to do anything else, right? But like as established, he called the ACLU. No points. No. <laughs> so speaking of that lawyer, we're going to cut back over to the court again. They're all going to rise and uh, he would like to make a statement. <sighs> yeah. No. I got to mention one more sign. It says... Got Messiah? Like, got milk. So good. Seriously, that was a sign. So good. Did I get to make the signs for this movie? I feel like I did. But yeah, he would like to make a statement. And his statement is an old person trying to remember the lyrics to Imagine. (laughs) Imagine there's no... Oh, God, what is it? It's not in your borders. Like, if there were no countries, I don't... (laughs) Do you have a rhyme um, with borders? Are you doing you're that? lucky, and I'm also lucky. Well, I'm Jesus, so I guess I'm- I want I want God to like boom Mike into the. I didn't write this for him. He's on his own for this. <laughs> to be clear, we we said we should script this out, and he said no. I want to wing it. Yeah. I just wanted him to play baseball. <laughs> so he gives this stupid monologue about how there shouldn't be borders and okay, sure. ch- check your judge privilege right <laughs> i have no idea and then the judge turns to the prosecution and yes. is like prosecution <laughs> your response <laughs> as if the as if the prosecution is going to be like i think borders are good <laughs> yeah, <laughs> high school debate like be it resolved borders <laughs> there's a very funny moment when the judge is like he's all yours right to the government attorney which would be normal because he just testified nobody was expecting him to but mm. that's what he did and then the defense attorney is like, you are not to question my client, oh, which is best. literally like, yeah, well, he's all yours. Like, what did you not get about this? It's cross-examination. Oh, it's even worse. I wrote this down word for word because I could not fucking believe it. Here's the dialogue that happens. So the prosecutor is, you know, yelling at Jesus and Jesus is ACLU ace attorney says, uh, the prosecution is testifying, not questioning my witness. And then, so then the prosecutor says, um, what religion are you? And then in the same sentence, this is all one sentence. Then yeah. the ACLU lawyer says, you are not to question my client. <laughs> it literally went from the prosecution is testifying, not questioning my witness, my client to you are not to question my client in the same sentence. No, it's um, unbelievable. Great catch, no great talking, catch. no questions. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and this is where we get the great legal trick from the prosecutor. Yes. Oh, yeah. This is her Columbo she, moment. Yeah. Right? This is her okay. Columbo thing. Remember earlier where she was watching him meditate, this matters now. She's like, okay, so uh, what are you doing, sir, Mr. Messiah, in this video where you're doing nothing? Well, because I don't think we established his his defense is, 
I'm a Muslim, or the lawyer says he's a Muslim, so he'll yeah. be killed if we deport him. In Israel. Right, exactly. In Israel. There are 1.7 million Muslims in Israel. I just want to point yep. that out. It's like 20% of the population. They're doing all right. Right, yeah. yeah. So the argument from the defense is he's Muslim, and now the prosecutor's going to like debunk that by showing a video of him all day not doing five prayers like every Muslim single Muslim yeah. has to do or else doesn't count and you're not or Muslim. Or you're not Muslim. Yeah. <laughs> like the prosecutor might as well be like, here, have a delightful bacon sandwich. Aha! Aha! <laughs> like so <laughs> stupid. Islam doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one who's like, wait, why is Jesus Muslim? I didn't, was that part of it? What was it? He's not really. He's he just, walks he, with he all he, men. Exactly. Walks with all men. Yeah, he, he comforts the audience here because you can feel the audience at home being like, like, wait a second, I didn't <laughs> sign up for no Muslim Jesus. And he's like, no, no. That was a trick. I'm going to let Muslims worship me too. But the courtroom uh, is like, rabble, rabble, not Muslim, yeah. rabble, rabble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I just said very quickly, since I do asylum all day, this is like my actual thing. The theory that the ACLU is setting up, as we, as we just said, very stupid, right? Because you're, you're claiming religious persecution in a place that has a bunch of Muslims. She was also making a convention against torture claim, which is totally legit. If seeing what Israel does to kids, who knows what they're going to do to hot Jesus. But everything about this, I mean, just the, the way that she makes this absurd statement that doesn't mean anything. He says this absurd thing that doesn't mean anything. That's it. That's the case. That's the yep. end. But isn't he on trial for whether or not he entered the country? Yeah. So <laughs> we're track of that. Yeah, we're not yeah, there anymore. This isn't yeah. an asylum hearing, right? Or is it like, no, you can argue, well... He shouldn't be deported, so therefore, fuck all this? I don't, yeah. It's no, stupid. thank you. Once again, providing the important OA context. What matters here is that this is supposed to be a criminal trial. Again, it's happening in immigration court. We see the placard behind the judge. But in the normal course of business, if anybody cares, which clearly no one who wrote this does, <laughs> after this conviction, because he'd definitely be convicted and, and do six months, maybe get some time served, but like this, is, this happens routinely to my clients. He gets the illegal entry charge, he's convicted, and then he's transferred to immigration court where he gets to raise the asylum claim. This uh, does not all happen like at a buffet. We don't <laughs> pick them all. Okay, so just want to get all the crimes and all the claims out on the right. table now. So it's not a combination yeah. Pizza Hut, Taco Bell situation <laughs> right. where it's like... Yeah. So you're saying Wingstop <laughs> is Pizza Hut, is what you're saying, <laughs> yeah. Matt. It's supposed to be an immigration deportation hearing, but also a criminal hearing, but also an asylum hearing, but also a convention against torture hearing in front of a judge who's apparently considering criminal claims before the immigration court. And there's a prosecutor who might be... Yeah. <laughs> oh, and by the way, the CIA also could have made a deal with... Could have made a deal this. to get him for that. Yeah. Yeah. So that we could have avoided watching any of this. Yeah. Fucking nonsense. So now we're going to cut over to the White House. And I have to tell you, podcast <laughs> listener, so when I was much. watching this, I assumed, oh, if I watched episode one and two, which I eventually did, I would see this character and learn who he is. Nope. <laughs> he is introduced for the first time at this point in the television program. This is the White House Council? I I would literally had to be like, okay, which of the West Wing cast members is this guy supposed <laughs> to be? That's what I was trying to figure out. Yeah, this is what I referenced too early. Sorry, it's hard to keep track of the nothing that happens in the show. This is him being like, we got to fix this. Too much bad publicity for the thing Trump definitely wants publicity over. Can't have that. Yeah. Right. I think this is actually a guy who was in the West Wing, though. I think he played like the head of the Secret <laughs> Service during the okay. West Wing. Yeah. Even more confusing. But don't worry. He has the point of this scene is he has a plan. We'll talk about it in a second. Okay. So now we cut to the judge's chambers that night. Remember how the guy at the White House who we never met before said he had his plan? This is his plan. Yeah. He's going to call the judge. Calls the judge. To be like, hey, there's the line. The pleasure is mine. All mine. <laughs> wow, that's awesome fucking bribery. I, what, is, what is, oh my God, it's so awkwardly badly written. That's him supposed to, supposed to be like, butter up the judge, you know? To be fair, if Trump hadn't committed <laughs> crimes way more obviously than this guy is doing, it'd be a lot less believable than it is. But since we now <laughs> live in the post, can you just find me a couple thousand God, votes? you're right. You know what? Re you're right. Retracted. Because this would actually just be Trump calling the judge and he'd just yeah. be saying, hey, do the thing I want you to do, and then we'd have it on tape. Guilty. I would like you to find him guilty. <laughs> Let me tell you just for a second about immigration judges, because again, there is the placard of the immigration court behind him. We're supposed to maybe think he's an immigration judge on top of this criminal stuff. Immigration judges, as I mentioned, this is really important. They're administrative judges. They're not 
judicial judges, which means that they operate at the pleasure of the president. He can hire and fire them. So hmm. this could have been an amazing opportunity to actually show something that could actually happen. The president putting pressure on an immigration judge. Hmm. They totally botched it. Like they, they could have established, you know, well, we all know you're not a real judge, so we're just going to do what we say. <laughs> but instead they pretend like everybody knows who this, who's this guy is. And again, Love my immigration judges out there. Do not get this wrong. I really do love every one of you. When we were off the air, you kept saying that all immigration judges smell their own butts. Like, that's what I remember Matt saying. We had to pause the record. I, I love them all. Morgan? And I'm not saying a bad thing about them. <laughs> and I, I really enjoy I mean, honestly, I, I actually like the ones in Boston, but um, they're, they're not. And they know this. They're, they're executive branch employees. They're not judicial judges. And there's no wow. reason that anybody outside of our community in the immigration law world knows who they are. And that's fine. That's how they want it. Does that mean they don't get a judge hammer? <laughs> I've never they seen They actually one. get the kids version. They get <laughs> yeah, the squeaky all, one. They that's get the all squeak, I would squeak. care about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, damn it. Yeah. 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 Their robes are actually just a t-shirt. They're allowed to wear a black t-shirt and it looks right. like they're wearing the robe. <laughs> But like with, with two or three lines, they could have set it up to show you the injustice of this and to mm. actually show you like a real Trump problem. But they didn't. They did this. No. So now we cut over to jail. Jesus does a, co a bad, a very bad coin trick for a child. Now, <laughs> oh, admittedly, so I know coin <laughs> tricks, but you guys, can you just verify you saw what happened, right? I was, note, yeah. I was so happy. I was like, Eli's going insane right now watching this. <laughs> okay. I've consulted for two Netflix. Netflix, you have my number. <laughs> oh, shit. Not only that, he could have just hid the coin in his handhole. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that would have yeah. been perfect. It's like if there's a magician who actually ha didn't have a thumb and then he could do the <laughs> fake thumb thing that Eli always talks about. <laughs> yeah, Whatever exactly. that is. Kind of an unfair advantage. You don't get to just have a quarter in immigration detention. I just want to point that out. So. Well, it's a half dollar. Like, it's a half dollar. It's a much yeah. more archaic yes. shitty uh, coin. So that, that implies that Jesus can actually do the trick where he produces a dollar out of his ear. Yeah. Ah. Honestly, it's the first trick he'd honestly do in the entire show, except for the <laughs> totally. very end where he's like, oh, I'm Jesus and I raised the dead. It's the extent of his powers. Yeah. yeah. And he's doing this just to like characterize him as being nice to a kid in the detention center. Yeah. I wanted the kid to be like, hey, you got any like fucking green cards back there behind my ear? Because yeah. that was nothing. <laughs> wow, man. This was super cool. Are all your miracles this shitty? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I haven't eaten in two days. Do you know anybody with... Uh, demons in them. I could send them into pigs if they asked me to first. <laughs> cool. My parents got killed by a tornado recently. Was that you? <laughs> the co which hand is the coin in? Not the one you thought. <laughs> it just fell right. through the hole, man. <laughs> Here we go. Big finale, everybody. Yes. What's going to happen? All right. Now it's time for the big finale. The judge walks in. Now, Matt, Again, you are the legal authority here. Do judges usually come in with a bit of a swagger in their step and without starting court or really doing anything, they just say, I have made a decision. <laughs> <laughs> no, that just not even going on the record or anything, just banging it out. Yeah, he grants Jesus asylum because, and I think this is an almost direct quote, the president is not the boss of me, which I, I will admit before we did this recording, I did not realize that the president is literally the he boss of the boss. The boss. <laughs> yep. Yeah. If he's an immigration judge and, and he makes a point too of saying the court, which stands independent of any and all influence, like to just really get it out there. That, and again, exactly the opposite of, and I'm not saying that immigration judges are under the thumb of the president, but like they're hired and fired by the attorney general. So like kind of. So literally, yes. It's, cool. You, yeah. you had that opportunity. Yes. Yeah. So the president's guy, the guy who called earlier, does like a Scrooge, like gadget. <laughs> yeah. And then we cut to the judge's chamber that night. Hey, oh, you so remember good. the CAT scan from the beginning that was confusing about what was wrong with the CIA agent? <laughs> yeah. It's not her CAT scan. It's the judge's CAT scan. What does that have to do with the rest of the show? Go fuck yourself. That's what it has to do. <laughs> Well, okay, but here's, if God is giving conservative judges brain tumors so that they stop fucking people over, that's literally the first good thing God has done in this show at all. So I actually support that. And it's so heavy handed too, because his wife comes in and is like, I brought you some meatloaf for some reason. And he's taking pills with whiskey. And she's like, you should take your cancer pills with water. And he goes, let me die in peace. You're like, yeah, I get it. You don't, you told me. You have cancer, man. Years. We saw the yeah. envelope. You don't and care. then they still do the drawer reveal. Oh, it was his brain scan. Yeah. Oh my God. If there's any pills you get to take with whiskey, it's fucking cancer pills, first yeah. of all. Absolutely. Yeah. But just to be clear, 
about God's entire plan, according to this show. <laughs> God had a problem, which is ridiculous already. God needed his immigrant son to live in America, which is very difficult to do. Sure. So God made a tornado that killed people and ruined shit. Took out a whole town. Also gave a CIA lady four miscarriages. We learned it was actually a bunch of those. Also did all the other miscarriages in theory and gave a judge brain cancer. That was the like eight step solution to like, I can't get a green card from the USA. It's really hard, even if you're God. Well, he also made up an entire court. So you got to get Yeah, he made up a whole yeah. court. Yeah, that didn't exist. And then the last shot of the episode. I love this so much, right? He's coming out and the media are all, oh, please tell us. Oh, rebel, 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 rebel. I, I do have to point this out, Matt, because you have the best note. One of the media people very clearly yells, what country will you go to next? <laughs> <laughs> he can't leave the U.S. now, I yell back as his lawyer. <laughs> He's kind of stuck here. That's, that's how asylum works. You can get special travel permission, but it takes forever. Like oh you can just get God. on a plane. <laughs> he jumps back into the car with the preacher. The preacher's like, quick, get in. And then, and guys, correct me if I'm wrong about this, because it is the final shot of the final episode. They have the graduate moment. Right where they're like, <laughs> we did it, we did it. Just see us on my side. He, put, he puts one hand on <sighs> Jesus's breast for a second. Jesus just looks at him. What are you doing, man? But yeah, it's awesome. The pastor being like super awkward, doesn't know what to say to Jesus. He's just like, so what? Oh my god! Oh no, you didn't say anything. I, I literally. <laughs> That's such a good joke, Eli. I had to pull it up right now to make sure I'm looking at it. You're in, you're hundred percent right. It's hundred percent so, right. They're so bad at acting. He did it. He did the face. His face droops. Yep. At the end. oh my god, you're right. What's he regret? What? Is, oh, it's the graduate. That's incredible. <laughs> they're graduate. He's like fuck. <laughs> this guy actually isn't Jesus. He's just some yep. some random terrorist I picked up and is now in my car. <laughs> I'm sorry to be the lawyer here, but I gotta ask, is he gonna come back for the criminal hearing at some point? <laughs> He's still facing a criminal charge, ostensibly an immigration. Yeah, like right? 2000 like, years. It, was, it wasn't dismissed. He wasn't acquitted. Maybe he was just like found secretly guilty and we're not talking about it. We'll Before this generation passes away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this case will finish. The other part of it I have to mention is that at the end of it, the judge says, welcome to the great state of Texas, which implies he only got asylum in Texas, which I love. Because yeah. <laughs> the immigration judge literally at the end of a hearing will say, welcome to the United States, right? And they don't say welcome to Massachusetts. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Welcome to Texas. Rough. Good news, bad news. All right. Before we wrap it up, uh, what did we learn? What's the important takeaway, like big picture? I think I now have a master's degree in anger. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's going to do it for Messiah. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we found another terrible movie. Eli, what's on deck? Okay. I think maybe I hallucinated next week's movie into existence, but from what I can tell from the trailer and the IMDb page, it is about the awkward walk down the mountain between Abraham and Isaac. It's called His Only Son, and I can't fucking wait. <laughs> hey, man, did you almost fucking stab me? <laughs> Technically, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 444 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Matt and Thomas for joining us. So, um, anything new going on that you guys want to mention? Any projects? <laughs> Please listen to opening arguments. I'm so happy to be back on it. Matt, Matt is amazing. Also, Matt's partner, Casey, Casey is on. And we've got double criminal, like actual criminal law experience on both sides of the fucking football field. You know, it's, a, it's such a cool thing. And we're having a great time. Fantastic. It's a lot of fun. Opening arguments. And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. And that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Matt, Thomas, and Eli, I'm Heath. Promise to work hard, turn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House close. A few awkward minutes went by in the car, and then Jesus said, So you were going to burn down the church? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> God went on to destroy a bunch of churches with tornadoes. <laughs> Jesus moved on to the second page of that card trick book and learned a much better way <laughs> to vanish a coin. <laughs>
okay. I had a mouthful of water, but I did it on time. Yeah, no, you did the good. <laughs> mm, that was good. Commit. I think when Noah's not here, Eli just fucking man eating. He's it must be. I think that I think I figured out what's going on. I think it, it's like parents yeah, aren't home. You know, exactly. super reasonable and well behaved most of the time, though. <laughs> <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2024, all rights reserved. Some people just know it's easy to get Allstate's best price online. They also know where to get half-off pizzas on Mondays, courtside seats at nosebleed prices, and they know you can easily get Allstate's lowest price on auto insurance at Allstate.com. Prices vary, including based on how you buy. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. All State Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, North.